ਸਾਊਥ ਏਸ਼ੀਅਨ ਵਿਜ਼ਨ ਟੀਵੀ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਇੱਕ ਰਹੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਦਰਸ਼ਕਾਂ ਦਾ ਅਵਤਾਰ ਸੂਰ ਬੋਲੋ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹਾਰਦਿਕ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈ ਅੱਜ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਇੱਕ ਐਸੀ ਸੈਮੀਨਾਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਚੱਲਾਂਗੇ ਜੋ ਕਿ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਹੈਲਥ ਸਰਵਿਸਿਸ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਕਰਵਾਇਆ ਗਿਆ ਫਰਸਟ ਐਨੂਅਲ ਮੈਂਟਲ ਹੈਲਥ ਫੋਰਮ ਜਿਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਿ ਕਾਫੀ ਡਿਸਕਸ਼ਨ ਹੋਈ ਡਿਪਰੈਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਹਮੇਸ਼ਾ ਹੀ ਕਿਸੇ ਨਾ ਕਿਸੇ ਇਸ਼ੂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਜੁੜੇ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਹਨ ਅਤੇ ਐਸੀ ਇਨਫੋਰਮ ਕਰਦਾ ਹੈ ਇਨਫੋਰਮੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੇਦੀ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਡਿਸਕਸ਼ਨ ਕਰੀ ਦੀ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਉਮੀਦ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਸਾਡੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਪਸੰਦ ਆ ਰਹੇ ਹੋਣਗੇ ਲਾਓ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਚੱਲਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਉਸ ਫੋਰਮ ਵੱਲ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਅਸੀਂ ਵਾਪਸ ਆਵਾਂਗੇ ਆਈ ਲਾਈਕ ਟੂ ਵੈਲਕਮ एवरीबॉडी ਟੂ ਦ ਫਰਸਟ ਐਨੂਅਲ ਮੈਂਟਲ ਹੈਲਥ ਫੋਰਮ ਹੈਲਥ ਬਾਈ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਹੈਲਥ ਸੈਂਟਰ ਐਂਡ ਦੇ ਕੈਨ ਬੀ ਟਾਈਮਸ ਮੈਂਟਲ ਹੈਲਥ ਇਜ਼ ਵੈਰੀ ਇੰਪੋਰਟੈਂਟ ਫੋਰ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਇਟਸ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਦੈਟ ਵੀ ਡੋਨਟ ਟਾਕ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਆਫਟਨ ਇਨਫ ਸੋ ਇਟਸ ਰੀਲੀ ਨਾਈਸ ਟੂ ਸੀ ਦ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਕਮ ਟੂਗੇਦਰ ਟੂ ਟਾਕ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦਿਸ ਸੈਂਸਿਟਿਵ ਇਸ਼ੂ ਸੋ ਵੀ ਮੂਵ ਅਹੈਡ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਲਾਈਕ ਟੂ ਇਨਵਾਈਟ ਦ ਸੀਈਓ ਆਫ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਹੈਲਥ ਸਰਵਿਸਿਸ ਟੂ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਹਿਸ ਵੈਲਕਮਿੰਗ ਰਿਮਾਰਕਸ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਜਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਵੈਲਕਮ एवरीवन ਦਾ ਕਸਟਮ ਕੰਡਰ ਟਾਈਮ ਟੂ ਕਮ ਆਊਟ ਔਨ ਸੰਡੇ ਜਿੰਨੇ ਵੀ ਮਹਿਮਾਨ ਆਏ ਆ ਜਿੰਨੇ ਵੀ ਸਾਡੇ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜੇਸ਼ਨ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੇ ਸਪੋਰਟ ਕੀਤਾ ਸ਼ੇਅਰ ਦੀ ਸੈਂਟਰ ਲੋਂਗ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਿਕਿਉਰਿਟੀ ਦੇ ਸੈਂਟਰ ਤੋਂ ਆਇਆ ਹੋਰ ਵੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਸੰਸਥਾਵਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਆਏ ਆ ਉਹ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਹੁਤ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ Uh, I really would like to welcome uh, all of you, especially the organizations that have assisted us uh, 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 in putting together this first annual uh, mental health forum. I, I really would like to thank you. We have uh, some important guests. Uh, we have Shir Dalis Tillo, uh, who is the Secretary of Security Center. We have uh, Rana Situ from um, uh, Sadari TV. and we have many seniors both from our programs and as well as uh, uh, some of the other uh, seniors groups in uh, Brampton um, we have some other uh, media personalities we have a star uh, uh, he is a friend of mine he is here uh, thank you for coming on a very short notice and we have many organizations who are also sent their representatives uh, uh, on this important day so to see sare sunday de din aaye ho ਇਹ ਆਪਣਾ ਪਹਿਲਾ ਮੈਂਟਲ ਹੈਲਥ ਫੋਰਮ ਹੈ ਦਾ ਪਹਿਲਾ ਐਨੂਅਲ ਹਰ ਸਾਲ ਹੋਇਆ ਕਰੂਗਾ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਆਪਾਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਬੱਚਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਤੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਮਾਨਸਿਕ ਤੰਦਰੁਸਤੀ ਆ ਉਹ ਉਹਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਸਮਝੀਏ ਉਹਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਵਾਕਫ ਹੋਈਏ ਉਹਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਅੰਡਰਸਟੈਂਡ ਕਰੀਏ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਮਾਨਸਿਕ ਤੰਦਰੁਸਤੀ ਆ ਸਰੀਰ ਦੀ ਤੰਦਰੁਸਤੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਆ ਸੋ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲੇ ਗੈਸ ਸਾਡੀਆਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲੇ ਸਕਾਇਟਰਸਟ ਸਾਡਾ ਕੰਸਲਟਿੰਗ ਸਕਾਇਟਰਸਟ ਆ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਵੇਟ ਪ੍ਰੈਕਟਿਸ ਵੀ ਆ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਹੈ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਅੱਜ ਦੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਇਵੈਂਟ ਆ ਅਨਫੋਰਚੂਨੇਟਲੀ ਮੈਂ ਆਪਣੀ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਗੀ ਚ ਜਦੋਂ ਵੀ ਕੰਮ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕੀਤਾ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਕੁਝ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕੀਤਾ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਬਹੁਤ ਦੇਰ ਚੱਲੇ ਆਮ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਕੋਈ ਇਨਸੀਡੈਂਟ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਆ ਤਾਂ ਆਪਾਂ ਥੋੜੀ ਜਿਹੀ ਦੀਆਂ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਬਾਤਾਂ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਫਿਰ ਉਹ ਬੰਦ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਆ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਦੱਸਣਾ ਚਾਹਨਾ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਮੈਂਟਲ ਹੈਲਥ ਆ ਇਹ ਬਹੁਤ ਜਿਆਦਾ ਪੇਨਫੁਲ ਆ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਇੱਕ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲੀ ਕਿ ਮੇਰਾ ਦੋਸਤ ਆ ਪਰਸਨ ਰਕੇਸ਼ ਤਿਵਾਰੀ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਬੇਟੇ ਨੂੰ ਡਿਪਰੈਸ਼ਨ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਡਿਪਰੈਸ਼ਨ ਕਰਕੇ ਹਸਪੀਟਲ ਐਡਮਿਟ ਹੋਇਆ ਅਨਫੋਰਚੂਨੇਟਲੀ ਹਸਪੀਟਲ ਵਾਲੇ ਦੀ ਅੰਗੈਲੀ ਨਾ ਉਹਨੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਆਪ ਨੂੰ ਹਸਪੀਟਲ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਖਾਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਮੈਂਟਲ ਹੈਲਥ ਵਾਰਡ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਨੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਆਤਮ ਹੱਤਿਆ ਕਰ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਸੋ ਇੱਕ ਪੇਨਫੁਲ ਪੀਰੀਅਡ ਆ ਸੋ ਮੈਂ ਇਹ ਪ੍ਰੋਮਿਸ ਕੀਤਾ ਕਿ ਜਦ ਤੱਕ ਮੈਂ
Do you know if you see that I'm a psychiatrist? I've been uh, practicing in Oakville for the last uh, almost 15 years. Before that, I was in Burlington. Uh, mental health, uh, I think, uh, like uh, Mr. Ruta said, is a, is a very big problem uh, uh, in the community at large. Um, but Sadi community, it's, uh, it's more of a problem because uh, acceptance is needed. I think um, there are a lot of people who are suffering from mental illness. But there is reluctance to seek help until things have really uh, gone to an extreme. Uh, I don't know the reason for that. Uh, maybe it's the awareness is not there. And I think um, what uh, Mr. Gutta talked about the event uh, which uh, led to this forum being uh, initiated. Um, it's a very sad event, but uh, I think at least we hope something good will come out of it. And if you are uh, hoping to have once a year mental health forum, that will give an opportunity to the community to ask the questions. So I'll just briefly talk about mental health in general, and I think today's topic I'm going to talk about depression, which is the commonest uh, uh, psychiatric or mental illness we deal with. Uh, mental health is a huge problem. Uh, in 1999, uh, which is uh, almost 15 years ago, when I looked at the, uh, the statistics, the mental health the, uh, economic impact on the community was in Canada was $7.9 million. For that impact, we would like the Loki company to do it, and the uh, uh, healthcare system is a lot of that. So $7.9 million is a lot of money. And I think uh, right now, in my opinion, the figures are probably three times more than that. So it's about $20 billion. I mean, you know, it affects the community. Uh, and I know the, uh, in Ontario, we are spending 40% of the budget is spent on the health care. And the figures are going up every year. And we still we find that the accessibility, uh, mental health, the availability is not to the extent we would like it. You know, there's long wait periods. Uh, even my own office, uh, you know, I'm putting patients in November now. So, I think you can only see so many patients. When you get a stack of referrals every week, there's only so much you can, you know, do. Uh, and I think that's true with all the um, hospitals and the clinics uh, all over. Brampton, Mississauga, Oakville, everywhere is the same story. Uh, mental health affects uh, youth a lot more than the adults. Uh, Thus, to we percent uh, youth actually suffer from mental illness at any one time. Uh, both uh, girls and boys are suffering from mental health issues. Uh, and it's the second leading cause, mental health, uh, I mean the suicide as a result of the mental health, is the second leading cause of death in the youth between the ages of 15 and 24. Second only to the traffic accidents. So it's a huge problem. Um, the frequency or the incidence of mental illness is very high. Uh, an illness like schizophrenia affects one person of the population. Any country in the world you look at, whether it's India or um, Russia or uh, Ukraine, anywhere you look, one person of the population suffers from schizophrenia. But depression actually is much more. Between 10 to 15 person of the population at any time would suffer from depression. So that's the today's topic. Uh, and what do we understand by depression? Because everybody uh, goes through a period of depression. For somebody to be labeled with uh, clinical depression or depressed, uh, major depression as we call it, it has to be a persistently depressed mood. And the psychiatrists follow um, a method of classification, the Hegel, uh, there is a book we follow, it's called DSM, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. So that the depressed mood has to be there for two weeks, minimum, before you can label somebody as suffering from clinical depression. And it affects 10 to 15 percent of the men, but women actually, quarter of women are affected by depression. And we'll talk a little bit about it affects the postpartum depression after the childbirth and other types of their life. As well. So just to, to talk about what the major depression is, it's a sad, despairing mood. Uh, which persists. That's the key. If somebody is feeling depressed for one day, you would not label them as suffering from clinical depression because we all are affected by events in our life. And that's not true depression. Uh, it has to be there for at least two weeks. 
and uh, it impairs the school, work, and uh, social function and the occupational function. Uh, in the DSM, we have uh, given nine symptoms, and a person should have at least five of those symptoms to qualify for a diagnosis of depression. And those symptoms are change in the appetite, either you feel hungry, uh, too much of hunger or no hunger at all. Mostly I've seen in people who suffer from severe depression, uh, ugly and they lose weight. It's very commonly we see. 10, 15, 25 pound weight loss is very common. And even if they eat, the food does not taste, uh, they don't enjoy it. You know, there's no pleasure in eating anymore. Sleep difficulties. Again, either they can sleep excessively or they don't sleep. Uh, sleep difficulty can be either difficulty falling asleep or they wake up during the night or they wake up very early in the morning. Loss of interest. Uh, things they used to enjoy before. Whether it is watching television or um, going and meeting with the friends or um, involved in some games, golf, sports, anything, there's loss of interest. And then there's a feeling of hopelessness and guilt that nothing is going to change in my life. Uh, I can do anything. My life is always going to be like this. That's very commonly we see in depression. And some people feel very guilty. Uh, they think that depression is not going to happen because I have a wrong job. So they feel guilty all the time, which is very common. Loss of energy, um, fatigue, feeling very tired. Uh, there are a lot of people complain of body ache, um, back pain, headaches, and they feel listless. Difficulty in concentration. Uh, focus actually. You cannot actually pay attention. Uh, you can't even read newspaper for 15 minutes when you're depressed. And it affects your memory. Mostly short term memory is affected. Uh, suicidal ideas are very, very common in uh, depression. I think anybody who suffers from severe depression at one point or the other will suffer from suicidal ideas. Preoccupation with failures. So one is constantly thinking about jadi chiza life is cheek ne hoya. You know, jadi galat ho hoya chiza your failures. People are focused on that. Either they can, what I mean by psychomotor agitation or retardation is either the person is very agitated or very lethargic. They are not able to speak much. They, they don't move fast, they're very slowed down. So those are the nine, out of those nine, we need at least five symptoms to diagnose depression. Uh, the symptoms can vary very greatly, like uh, Mr. Muta said, it can be mild illness or it can be very severe. And uh, patients we get in the hospital are generally more severe. Um, and many people suffer for weeks, months and years before asking for help, help which is very, very common. I find that uh, many times I will see patients who have been depressed for 10 years. They've been suffering for 10 years. And finally, if somebody encourages them to go to the family doctor and get a referral, and then they come to us. Uh, if the depression is treated, the depression will last for two to six weeks. If uh, the medicine is given to them and it's effective, within six weeks you can see the recovery or improvement. An untreated depression, if it is not treated, it may last for 6 to 18 months or longer sometimes. Uh, there are different types of depression and I think it's a huge uh, topic to talk about in a very short time I have here. Uh, what, what we mean by typical and atypical features? Typical depression would be a person is not able to sleep, uh, they don't feel hungry, they have lack of energy, the mood is depressed in the morning compared to the evening. We call it as diurnal variation. And they have poor concentration, they have poor memory, and they feel guilt, guilt symptoms, and they actually have suicidal ideas. Those are typical symptoms of depression. Atypical, some patients actually will present differently, like they're sleeping excessively, they overeat, and but they also have other symptoms like uh, lack of interest and uh, they feel sad. But some of the symptoms are not, which are typically seen in depression. So those are the two different types of depression. Then there is another condition called seasonal mood disorder. We are actually heading into fall. Um, I think next month, the temperature will change. 
from October to April in Canada are the months when we see people who suffer from depression have what we call a seasonal mood changes because the light, the daylight hours are very short. People are more likely to become depressed. And that happens in all the northern countries. Not only in Canada, but in Scandinavia and other countries also we see the same thing. And there is a different type of treatment for seasonal mood disorder. Then postpartum depression. What we mean by postpartum is after the childbirth. 13% of the women will suffer from this depression. Although uh, a larger number of women will go through milder form, we call it a postnatal blues. In child, in, you know, because the hormone changes only, the uh, estrogen drops from very high peak to down. So there is a postnatal blue, which is very, very common. I think uh, 4 in 10 women will experience that. But 13% of the women will have more severe form of depression called postpartum depression. Then there is depression with psychosis. What I mean by psychosis is um, that the um, person has lost touch with reality. So that's part of the we call it as auditory hallucination. The only ideas they don't make any sense to the family members. Like they will say things which are totally out of uh, context. Uh, we call them as delusional ideas. Sometimes they become paranoid. They feel that people are there to hurt them and harm them. So if those symptoms are present in somebody with depression, we call it as depression with psychosis. And the treatment is essentially the same, although sometimes the medicines, different we have to use for psychosis, we have to use different types of medicines. The core depression is dysthymia, uh, which is a low-grade chronic depression. Uh, it has to be present for two years, with no period of normal uh, mood in between. Uno is dysthymia, and that affects a lot of people, dysthymia. Uh, and I find this time when actually the medicines do not help them a lot, but psychotherapy to talk to somebody helps them more than medicine. Hey folks, I'm here to endorse the Disability Network. They are great people. They're people that get by, they employ, they support, and they really, really get behind people with disabilities. So come on, let's throw our support behind a great cause, the Disability Network. Cause this key depression, I think nobody knows for sure. There is not one thing uh, uh, a depression on that. Genetic and family history. Uh, I find it very difficult. Uh, patients, when we see them, we ask for the family history, and many times the parents do not know. The, um, especially, you know, somebody who's come from villages and, you know, uh, where there was no uh, treatment of physical illnesses and nothing, mental illnesses basically uh, out of the question. And they would not know whether there is a family history on the mother's side or the father's side of somebody suffering from depression. But if you really look deeply, you will invariably find that there was somebody had problem either with depression or drinking excessively alcohol or doing drugs and other kind of things, which Mr. Muta will talk about is also a part of depression. And I think you will find the history. And that's what we mean by genetics and the family history. If there is a strong family history, there's a likely, higher likelihood of having depression in those times. Psychological vulnerability. Some people are more vulnerable to stresses in their life than others. And they may be more likely to develop depression. Uh, life events and environmental stresses, like the loss of job, loss of marriage, loss of partner, loss of children, or other losses in one's life can also trigger depression. And then there are biological factors. Um, there are some other illnesses which can produce, uh, which can predispose a person to have depression. And I'll touch upon those illnesses. Uh, depression caused by other illnesses. Uh, the commonest is uh, thyroid problem. Hypothyroid and underactive thyroid uh, that can lead to depression. 
अगर ओवर एक्टिव हुए थायराइड ग्लैंड वी फाइंड दैट इट कॉजेस एंजाइटी एंड पैनिक कैंसर सर मेनी पेशेंट्स विल बी डायग्नोज्ड विद कैंसर विल हैव डिप्रेशन एंड आफ्टर द स्ट्रोक स्ट्रोक एक्चुअली वी फाइंड जनरली हैपेंस इन ओल्डर एज ग्रुप एंड मेनी पीपल आफ्टर दिस सफर द स्ट्रोक दे विल हैव डिप्रेशन सब्सटेंस अब्यूज एंड डिप्रेशन आई थिंक दैट इन इटसेल्फ इज अ ह्यूज टॉपिक एंड आई फाइंड दैट पीपल हु इदर drink alcohol or do drugs uh, sometimes they are actually suffering from depression and they are treating themselves khud apna ilaaj kar rahe hain by drinking alcohol can they then thodi der waste relief mil raha from depression but in the end actually depression the alcohol makes the depression worse you know so we find that's a huge area and i think in the youth today substance abuse um, whether it is uh, cannabis uh, or uh, cocaine or uh, pcp and every day actually every week i come across new drugs which have been used that's a huge it's a big big problem actually right now and some kids are starting from very early age even in the middle school they start to drugs and depression associated with anxiety i think uh, anxiety is actually punjabi will call as kubrat you know very commonly you will see uh, there is depression and anxiety they they exist together so uh, once we have identified the depression haga so where do we go from there what are the avenues available how do we get the help the first person of contact will be the family doctor because in canada uh, the uh, government uh, requires us to have a referral from the family doctor to all the specialists not only psychiatry and we need to have a referral from the family doctor who should assess the patient first and there are some very 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 good family doctors who can treat depression very adequately and i have come across some family doctors who uh, do a very good job they can they very comfortable in starting the treatment and following the patients through the illness so they are the first contact and mere saath mein i think in a family practice the typical family doctor the office on that 40% patients actually have psychiatric problem so four out of 10 will have some psychiatric problem so that's the first way the treatment has to start from and if the illness is more severe and the family doctor does not feel comfortable that they can treat the patient they can make a referral to psychiatrist and the psychiatrist can be either in the private office or in the hospital outpatient uh, the treatment can be uh, either outpatient uh, seeing the psychiatrist in their office once a week once every two weeks once a month whatever is needed or they can be admitted to the hospital if the depression is very severe uh, the other forms of treatment are psychotherapy we call it as uh, talk therapy in layman's term um to see jao the psychiatrist or therapist no you can go and see him every week they you talk about jo to you know pareshaniya on jo problems you have you can talk to him and he's trained to help you i know you can talk to your friends and family members but uh, it's a different talking to a trained therapist who is not related to you so you can talk about any issues and uh, you don't feel judged by some by another person and i think that's how the psychotherapy works psychotherapy is the various techniques also uh, commonly used uh, on the uh, treatment the uh, psychotherapy is interpersonal and cognitive behavioral therapy those are the two examples although there are many other forms of psychotherapy we have there is one for long term psychotherapy uh, based on the teachings of freud uh, who was the father of psychiatry and his form of psychotherapy is a very long long term psychotherapy um, we call it a psychodynamic psychotherapy and i think there are not many therapists who are doing the long term therapy now uh, because the cognitive therapy uh, lasting 15 to 20 sessions is equally effective then we have group therapy where people with similar illness like if they are suffering from depression 10 or 12 people are sitting together and they can share their own unique experiences and get a support from the group so we call it as group therapy and like for education um, for any koi bhi illness jo hi hoti hai agar kisi jyada aware hoye illness ke bare mein to the knowledge hoye ki ki uda reason ki hai kai illness ka the ilaaj ki hai kai the outcome is always better once you know that this is what is wrong with me uh, this is what i can expect 
and this is the treatment is going to be, and this is the outcome is going to be, you're more likely to follow the treatment. So I think psychoeducation is the most important um, step in my opinion, to teach the patient about the illness. We provide them with handouts uh, all the time, you know, what the depression is, and I think in a simplified form, it, it, it explains what the illness is. And it also improves the, um, uh, improve the adherence, like the patient's ability to stay on the treatment is also improved because I find that is the biggest factor. Many um, patients are very miracle, uh, I write them antidepressant uh, prescription liquid in they, I see them a month later, can they put Fadani Hoya? Because they only took it for four days. They thought it was like an antibiotic. Uh, you know, whereas they were told that they have to take it every day, regularly. And antidepressant uh, medicine on the end, one of the Asar actually charged she after the minimum it takes before they start working. So, person is now going to feel better if they don't take the medication. So, I think that's where the psychoeducation comes into play. You have better the scope? This is our Dajda South Asian Vision TV program, uh, annual mental health forum, which is Punjabi Community Health Services. This is the first time we have seen 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 the